Hey, so now when I graph a bottom-heavy rational expression, what I'm talking about here is that the powers on the bottom are heavier, so I have more powers. This is a second-degree um, polynomial, and this is a first-degree, so there are more powers on the bottom. It's heavier on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my um, the list that I always do because I want to know my horizontal asymptote, my vertical asymptote, my x-intercept, my y-intercept, my domain. Just like always, the vertical asymptote and the domain come from the denominator. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is um, factor out that denominator. So let's rewrite our polynomial as x minus 7 over x plus 6 and x plus 1. Okay. Um, so then you can see from the denominator, if I set the denominator equal to 0, I'm going to have two vertical asymptotes. So I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at negative 6 and another one at negative 1. And my domain restriction says x cannot equal negative 6 and x cannot equal negative 1. Okay, so on our graph I'm going to do a vertical asymptote oops, <laughs> at negative 1 and another one at negative 6. Okay, now my horizontal asymptote has to do with heaviness. So Bottom heavy um, polynomials are actually the irrational expressions are actually the the easiest because they always have a horizontal asymptote just at y equal to zero. So my horizontal asymptote is going to be along the x-axis. So here is my horizontal asymptote along the x-axis. Okay. So now can you see I um, unlike the last uh, video I have six parts of the graph. Okay. So I have six parts of the graph, and I'm going to have to fill in, you know, either the top or bottom here, either the top or bottom here, and either the top or bottom here, okay? So um, now I'm going to do my x and y intercepts, which again, never change. So for my y intercept, I plug zero in for x. So if I plug zero in for x, can you see I'm going to get negative seven over six, which is about negative 1.2. So on my y axis, I'm going to put a, a point right here at... Um, can you see that right there? <laughs> Sorry, right here at negative 1.2. And my x-intercept comes from setting my numerator equal to 0. So when I set my numerator equal to 0, I'm going to get positive 7. So this is going to be, there we go, at 7. So on my graph, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, and remember, um, this does make sense because remember, you can cross the horizontal asymptote, but you can never, ever cross or touch the vertical asymptotes. So really, what is going on with this graph, um, and you don't need to worry about this so much, is that this graph is going to go through, it's going to approach this asymptote down here from the below, that's right. It's going to go through the um, y-intercept, oh, actually, it should have been like on the other side, <laughs> and then it's going to go through this point and approach the y-asymptote. Um, really, if I draw this up here a little bit better, um, what is going on is it is coming up here, it's crossing, it's actually going above and then back below. Okay, um, But don't worry about that so much. It, it, this is good enough. As long as you're, you're kind of going through both of those points and you're in those quadrants, that is totally fine. That's really as, as specific as you need to get, because I need you to be able to do this without a graphing calculator. And a lot of this action over here, you're not really going to see without a graphing calculator. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to pick a point um, in here and find out what's going on. Um, actually, I'm going to pick one on the left, and then I also need to pick a point over here. So the two outside quadrants are actually the easiest. So if I pick a point... Um, let me, let me do my little t-chart here. So I'm going to do an x-y chart. If I do a point um, to the left of the vertical asymptote, the vertical asymptote was at negative 6. So if I plug in negative 7, um, if I plug in negative 7, I'm gonna, my graph is going to give me the value of, sorry, uh, negative 2.33. Oops. Negative 2.33. Oops. So that is going to be um, down below the um, x-axis, right? So I'm going to have a point down here, and this is good enough. Once I know that there's a point over there, that's good enough to just graph your graph like that. That's all you need to do. You don't need to investigate anymore. So now there are two options for this middle section of the graph. Um, I can have 
in this middle section, I'm either going to have something that looks like a parabola or I'm going to have something that looks like a cube root. Okay, it could be positive cube root, could be negative cube root, could be a positive parabola or a negative parabola. So um, what I need to do, unfortunately, is I need to do a little um, graphing or just plugging of points to notice that, you know, that trend. I probably am going to have to graph probably about three points, at least I do, until I can find that trend. So if I go, and remember, I would need to pick um, x values, you got to stick between here. So remember, this was negative 1 and negative 6. So I might pick um, negative 2, uh, maybe negative 3, and negative 5. You know, it really doesn't matter. So when I do that, I've already done that, I get 2.25, I get 1.6, and I get positive 3. So if I plug those over here, I'm going to get at negative 2, I'm going to be up here at 2.25. Then at negative 3, I'm going down because my value is smaller. See how my, um, my y value is smaller, so I'm going down. But then when I come over to negative 5, I'm going back up. So if you notice that trend, you, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for, am I going down and then up, or am I, do I keep going down? So if I connect all those, that's going to look something like a parabola. And again, that is as specific as you need to get. You don't need to be any more precise than that without a graphing calculator.